Lighting can be so weird, right? Because like right now, I'm sure this looks fine, but today I want to give you guys my five tips on how you can improve your stream lighting to make something that might already look decent or good and to turn it into this with my five tips for lighting your live streams. What's up everybody, it's Abigi. First and foremost, thank you for stopping by today's video. Just wanna remind you all before we dive into this, if you're not subscribed to the channel and enjoy the content at all, be sure to click that subscribe button. 93% of my viewers are not subscribed to this channel. If you're new here and you don't know if you wanna subscribe yet, take all the time in the world. To the point of the video though, lighting tips for your live streams. To be completely realistic, these tips can be useful for just regular YouTube videos as well. When it comes to live streams, I think people are at that point where they want to start taking things serious, but like the background and lighting as a whole is not that big of a deal. Two big things as well with this. Today's video, I'm not going to dive in how to use a DSLR camera specifically for lighting or how to use your webcam specifically for lighting as well. I'm not gonna go in depth on how to set your specific white balance or, or how to utilize ISO and shutter speeds for whatever camera you have because there are plenty of tutorials out there. So if you wanna check some of those things out, be sure to go do so and then come back and, and check out my tips for lighting. So the goal today is to not confuse people, to not use like big words, over complicate things. I just wanna break it down to some basics. First thing to discuss is turning off auto. I know it's going to be so challenging for you to figure out your device and kind of learn this stuff more, even though you want to be professional with it. It's hard to want to learn the professional side of things with stuff, but turning off auto is going to help so much. Even setting a white balance on your camera so that way the tones aren't changing, especially with the background colors moving around. Cameras are so smart, don't get me wrong, but the camera does not know better if it wants to expose me properly or expose the entire room properly. And when you're trying to kind of make yourself stand out from your background and your lighting is bad in the room along with yourself and everything's on auto, your camera or webcam might freak out a little bit trying to pinpoint how to properly expose the room. So messing with settings and making sure that you're in control with that is going to be big, especially with the, the whole white balance thing. Even just picking a specific white balance, whether it be like daylight or, or shade, just something to have so that way your skin isn't changing to the tone of the room. I can't tell you how much that helps some people. So tip number one, don't shoot auto. It's gonna be tough at first, but after you learn some stuff about this, you're gonna be happier that you did. Number two, there is a such thing as too much light. Having too much light in your scene, both on you and in the background, and we'll talk about the background here in a second, but specifically having too much lighting on you can make you look blown out and make your skin look very unflattering and it takes away from the contours of your face. It takes away those shadows that make you the person who you are. You kind of lose those physical, human, natural aspects about your face. Having too much lighting will just initially get into all those little spaces around your face that make you you and, and kind of just make it look a little unflattering and unnatural, quite frankly. So don't overdo, dial it back a little bit and, and, and let's see who you are. By the way, if you have any further questions or something that I didn't discuss in this video, you can also stop by a live stream sometime and ask me while I'm live. Follow me on Twitch and turn on the notifications. You'll see when we go live or a big one is joining our Discord server or just following me on Twitter. I always post when I go live there. Which leads me into tip Number three, use an angle to light yourself. One of the most common mistakes that I see when lighting yourself for live streams specifically is everybody thinks that they have to have all this lighting like behind their desk on both sides across the board. So that way light's coming at them from everywhere. And again, you're losing kind of that natural contour to your face. Having a light more angle just kind of brings back the shadows to your face, which makes you look more, more natural, more realistic. It's a more flattering look. And we get to see you as a person. We don't have to see this big, white, flat, a spotlight blob in front of the screen. So it kind of gives it that more film look, makes it look a little bit more professional. And tip number four is an expansion from that because it's expanding the light. I was so excited to use that like dad pun with that expansion. 
of, of the topic of the tip because I want to talk about expanding the light. Okay, that was actually pretty stupid. No, but in all seriousness, a wider, softer light is gonna help kind of bring out those shadows. It's gonna give this less like harsher light pinpoint look to where you see the sharp contours of your face. It's gonna keep some of that contrast, keep some of that shadow in your face, but it's gonna kind of lightly bring them out a little bit so that way you get like a smooth, natural film look to your face. And a big bonus to that is even though I have a much larger light source around me technically, because it's a big giant soft box, it's a less form of intensity of the light in itself. Like having a smaller light here at the corner to be able to bring all that light out into my face, to be able to light my face to this comparison, you have to like turn it up just a little bit more because it's coming from such a smaller source as to where when you have a larger soft box, a larger light source around you, you're able to turn down the intensity of that light so it's not as bright while still having the benefits of being lit up. And tip number five, a very simple one and probably the biggest problem that I see people dealing with right now in 2020 with the lighting in their stream setups. Stop trying to over light the background. The reason why a lot of my shots and my live streams look a little flattering for me is I have enough lighting to make me stand out from the background and then that's it. A lot of people nowadays, although they are cool, have things like nano leaves and RGB, like light stacks from, from the floor to halfway to the ceiling. Really cool stuff. And they're really good accents. For example, you see those guys right there. Two accent lights to kind of just make the background pop a little bit. But where people go wrong is they overdo it. And one of the things that I'm seeing from a lot of live streamers right now is they think in their head that the background has to be lit up. In order to see things around them and like the environment of their room, they have to have a lot of lighting back there so you can see it. By going back to tip number one and stop shooting an auto and kind of learning your devices a little bit more, learning shutter speed, aperture, ISO, you will be able to control your settings to where you can still see things in the background, to where you can use some minimal lighting to kind of make some, some contour pop, to bring this environment and set up to your live streams, but not to the extreme to where you just like blow out the background. And at that point, it's just so hard for your background lighting to compete with your lighting. And it just gives away from that unflattering kind of you being pushed out from everything, the contrast of seeing the streamer. Although it's cool to have this stuff in the background, let's be honest, the majority of this video, it was just flattering stuff. At the end of the day, we're having the conversation. I am your focus and making sure I am properly lit up and exposed from my background is going to be huge. All right, there it is. Simple, short and sweet, my five tips for some better lighting for your live streams. The biggest thing to take away from this, I believe, is learning your craft. At the end of the day, I can only show you a couple things. I can talk about this stuff, but you're gonna have to get into your gear and learn these things. If this video was helpful in any way, shape or form, please let me know in the comments down below if you have any further questions. I'm going to leave a link in the description of some of the lights that I use, both affordable options and the big light source that I use for all my videos and live streams. If you stuck around to this part of the video and you felt like I did a good job here, again, 93% of the viewers aren't subscribed to this channel. So make sure you're logged in and click that heckin' subscribe button. Maybe turn on those notifications. We'd love to have you. Make sure you stop by a live stream sometime. I post when I go live over on Twitter or you can just go follow me on Twitch to catch me live. Uh, other than that, that's all I got for you guys today. Good luck, let's get some lighting. I'm out, peace, deuces.